It's the largest release from Microsoft ever, and I'm in Tokyo when it's four in the morning. We have a lot to discuss. In January 2025, patch report. Well, hello everyone. I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative, coming to you from Tokyo, where Pondo and Automotive is about to kick off next week. And obviously, we've got some production issues. We've got a lot of extra noise in the room. We've got very bad lighting. And uh, yeah, I apologize for that. But uh, hey, that's not what you're here for. You're here to talk about patches. So let's talk about some patches, shall we? And let's start with, uh, of course, the Adobe release. Thankfully, Adobe took it easy on us. We have five updates addressing 14 CVEs in Photoshop, Substance 3D, uh, Stager, and Designer, Illustrated for iPad, that's an important distinction, and of course, Adobe Animate. Uh, the largest one is 3D st Stager. What's interesting this month for me for the Adobe stuff, all of this is uh, you know, priority three, none of this is under active exploits, but they're all critical rated code execution bugs. So take that for what you will. Uh, Substance 3D Stager is the largest. Photoshop, I'd probably say it's the most important since you use Photoshop more than you would probably use. It's got a bigger you know, deployment base. Also note that the Illustrator for iPad is just the iPad version. So interesting, I haven't seen that distinction before. But let's talk about the 800 pound gorilla in the room, which is Microsoft. 159 new CVEs, people, that is a record. Microsoft has never addressed more than this in a single month, so it is big. And it's in the usual components, uh, 11 are critical, 148 are important, three are under active attack. And let's start with those. So we have three bugs here in Hyper-V, and they're listed as elevation of privilege, and they could lead to executing code with system privileges. Now that's all the information Microsoft gives us. However, if I'm looking at it, and I say I go from a guest OS to system on the underlying hypervisor, that's a scope change, and that makes these a lot more important. These are under active attack, but Microsoft doesn't say where or how much. But uh, this is the sort of thing that really kind of frightens me as far as you know, what could happen with a Hyper-V system. So definitely check those out. Uh, up next, we have uh, a CVSS 9.8, which came through the ZDI program. Very happy with this one. It is a remote code execution bug in OLE, and really it uh, occurs in Outlook, and it's parsing uh, RTF files. So there's a, a problem in that, you know, the, I mentioned the specific flaw there. Um, it's, it's improper validation of user supply data which is cool. I mean, that's nice. Nice little bug. I, I kind of expect to see that maybe in the wild. It uh, definitely should get a lot of a, a, a lot of attention from attackers. Up next, we have this Spegnigo extended negotiation wheel drop security mechanism remote code execution vulnerability. And I think I just hit triple word score uh, with that. Uh, it's a mouthful of a bug, but it's also a authentication mechanism and there is an RCE bug in that. And I always get bothered by RCE bugs in the security mechanisms. So, sorry. Um, but even if you don't rely on this for negotiation, make sure you check that out. We've got two uh, remote desktop services, uh, remote execution vulnerabilities, and these are both remotely reachable. So in other words, if you have your RDS uh, internet accessible, anyone from the internet could send you a message and can take over your remote desktop. This is a common way enterprises are absolutely uh, compromised. They leave RDP that's accessible to the internet, and somebody pops it, usually through brute force. But in this case, you don't even need brute force. You just need a bug. Now, I don't know how likely these bugs are to be exploited. I don't know all of what goes into exploiting these bugs, but just their sheer existence worries me. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and next, we, we normally don't know when uh, we have five bugs that are listed as publicly known, we don't always know where they are. We know where this one comes from, and this is a theme spoofing vulnerability. Uh, my friends over at Zero Patch found this, and they found a uh, bug that was just not fully addressed, and this is how they got through it. So definitely check that out. Here is the full list, and it is a huge list. Uh, I've tried to point out where you have extra stuff happening. Uh, there's a couple of Windows kernel bugs where you need to make sure that you have the latest services stack installed before you actually uh, load the patch. So again, there's there's extra stuff to do this month, which is just crushing know that there are 
there's that many bugs to take a look at anyway. Let's skip down here to some of the other critical bugs and uh, see what we're looking at. Look at this, I'm scrolling forever. Okay, so um, there's a Visual Studio that's open and owned. If you're loading malicious packages into Visual Studio, um, you need to go retake your uh, InfoSec training because you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, branch cache is resisted. There's a bug in branch cache. It's just adjacent networks. There's an RM cast, which is, it sounds really, really bad, but you have to be listening. You have to have a PGM port listening on that uh, affected server. Um, that should not be connected to the internet because there's really no authentication on PGM messages. So if you're doing that, stop. Um, and then, you know, go look and audit to see that you're uh, not doing that. Technically, this bug is wormable, but I don't think we're ever going to see it exploited. And again, it would only be wormable between systems with the PGM uh, application listening on a port. So not very big. Uh, the NTLM bug. Uh, listen, folks, if you're still using NTLM v1, man, it is the year of our Lord 2025. Uh, you have got to uh, migrate, okay? That's bad stuff. Um, Microsoft does provide guidance on that. And uh, the digest authentication works in the same manner as the RD remote desktop bug. So definitely check that out as well. There are a total of 60 remote code execution bugs in this release. It is gigantic. Uh, there's several open and owned bugs in Office, uh, three publicly known bugs in Access. That's right, Access still exists. And some people still use it, and you shouldn't judge. You shouldn't, but I will. Um, and there's also a preview pane bug, but it's only in legacy versions of Outlook for Mac. So if you're on Outlook for Mac, I wish I had my tinfoil hat here. What if they introduced a bug in legacy versions of Outlook for Mac just to force you to go to the new modern experience of Outlook for Mac? That's probably not true. That's just a conspiracy. Don't believe it. Uh, but yeah, just get the patch. That's all you really need to do. Um, there's not a whole lot other here other than a print bug uh, in an LTD server. That does remind me of Print Nightmare from 2021. Hopefully it's not nearly that bad. Uh, and yes, yes, yes. If your eyes do not deceive you. There is a patch for Internet Explorer. What's that you say? Internet Explorer is dead. No, Internet Explorer is a zombie and keeps coming. It is relentless. It will not stop. It will not sleep. It will come for you. Uh, it's not actually a Terminator. It's just like a process that just will not die. So uh, we've got more than three dozen privilege escalation bugs. Most of these just lead to system level code execution or admin level code execution. There are a couple of uh, interesting ex exceptions. We've got more bugs here that require physical access and inserting a USB. So that's interesting. Good to see Microsoft patching those. Um, We've got, uh, we've got several app container and sandbox escapes in, in this month's release too. So definitely check those out if you're into such things as am I, uh, because app container escapes and sandbox escapes are cool. Much like Fezes, they're, they're cool. Lots of security feature bypasses in this month's release as well. And the one that stands out first to me is the, the SFB in Mark of the Web, because we've seen that in uh, a lot of active attacks in 2024, people bypassing Mark of the Web uh, and then installing malware on a target system. So definitely check that out. Uh, we have a couple in Office that's bypassing protections for things like macros. Uh, and then uh, bypass of secure boot. Um, yeah, that's what it's there for. Same for BitLocker. Bypass that as well. They're like, oh, but the one for BitLocker requires physical access. Yes. Yes, BitLocker is specifically for physical access type threats. So, uh, anyway, uh, information disclosure bugs. I'm not going to waste your time with too many of these. There are a couple of notable exceptions that are really interesting. Uh, and the first is in the cryptographic component, which could leak the contents of encrypted PKS1 information. That's kind of cool, uh, but it's still encrypted, I think. So, that's okay. The BitLocker stuff is what worries me. Speaking of BitLocker, uh, one could disclose the unencrypted hibernation images. So that's, I mean, that's that's it. And the other one could uh, expose the BitLocker key. Well, there you have it. 
that's a that's some pretty cool information being disclosed and that's what you should pay attention to uh, Microsoft has heard our prayers our pleas have fallen on receptive ears and they provided us just a little bit more information about the Nihilus service bug and you can see the details here in the blog uh, none of them are too very specific but at least we're getting somewhere so if you're watching Microsoft thank you for this and, and keep it coming you can't you can't give us too much data and if you're providing feedback to uh, Microsoft as well you keep doing that too because yeah they won't change unless we, we yell uh, finally there are a couple spoofing bugs there's a smart screen one that looks awfully familiar uh, because we've been seeing this in smart screen throughout the last six months that always makes me think the previous uh, fixes were not fully there uh, there's a spoofing bug in SharePoint that's really a cross-site scripting bug and uh, there's really no information about the spoofing bug in Active Directory so that is it so folks I've tried to summarize it quickly I'm gonna try to edit out all the extra noise and everything else my laptop fan is going at hundred miles an hour right now creating hurricane force excuse me tsunami force winds here in the island of Japan uh, but lots to talk about this month I, I hope you stayed with me to the end our next patch Tuesday is going to be February 11th. I will be back in the friendly confines of the Mid-South headquarters. Uh, in other words, my home office. Check out Honda on Automotive. I've seen some of the entries. Uh, I've got a sneak peek. And some of them are going to be very, very cool, uh, especially in the Tesla wall charger. Just a little sneak preview for those who watch to the end. Uh, but uh, yeah, so do that. Uh, we'll follow up with a bunch of videos here on YouTube, as well as on Blue Sky and Twitter. We refuse to use a letter and uh, Mastodon and Instagram and just about everything else. So we hope to see you there. Until then, stay safe, everyone, and I hope your reboots are smooth and clean.